the discussion happening within various Facebook groups. So I think that might draw a lot of attention and allow them to address this and, you know, clarify anything on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, he has, he has the event today, so maybe we can try and work something out like that. Hey, Ron, okay. this is Angela. I am in Memphis with him um, this, this evening. I'm here. Actually, we're all here now, but um, I have a question about the Q&A, and mostly because of the way the direction that this particular conversation has gone. Are we still doing a Q&A at the end? Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, that's usually been Bill and Gary's call on each event that we would plan to do that. If he, you know. Okay. Hi, uh, Heather from Connecticut. I mean, I guess the thing that we're all kind of frustrated with is that we feel like today, because of how Bill said what he said, like we feel like we have to do so much damage control now to, you know, with our friends and family, with, you know, people that we're trying to talk to. And I guess, it's just, uh, you know, for, for, for us, the libertarians, we understand what he was trying to say, but the way that it's being presented, it's, you know, it, it's kind of hard to counter that in an effective way when, you know, he's, when he used the words vouch for. I mean, I just, uh, so I guess I'm a little concerned about, you know, how to go about that damage control when talking, you know, with other people about it. Kind of piggybacking off that too, um, as a Republican working for the campaign, um, there and me talking to the various Republican groups that I'm a member of, this has really hurt the Republican vote um, because the Republicans are so discontent against his against Hillary Clinton that if it, with him saying that he's vouching for them, they're not going to support him now because he's vouching for a candidate that they despise. This is Lindsay in Ohio. I would actually counter on that. The, 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 the Ohio Republicans I've spoken with like him more for this. The, 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 again, we're, yeah, but then again, we're a very anti-Trump state, Republican. The, the Republicans in Ohio are very anti-Trump, so, I mean, it, it, it's probably a, a, a unique situation. I'm in, Col in I'm in Colorado, so I guess it, it might be different re in yeah. different regions, but that's that's just, that's what I've been noticing. I've had I've had five of my, of my Republican GOP operatives tell me that, that they will want to help out these last five days in their free time when they're not working. And that these five are working for actual Republican campaigns. Okay. That's interesting. So. I know. In, in all kind of, honesty, yeah, kind of the in, in, Colorado, but. in all honesty, if any Republican has any issue by any means, you need to let them know that according to the 12th Amendment, there's no way Governor Wealth will become the Vice President. That's yeah. plain and simple. <laughs> if Gary wins, he gets in office, Bill Weld won't. It'll probably be Pence. So if they want to, you know, have a, a candidate that is close to them, there, there they go. There's your counter. That's your counter directly to them. Just let them know. Don't worry. Look at Gary. Don't worry about Bill. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good way to take it. Hey, Ron, I, I have a question for you. Um, does Governor Weld just not realize what he's saying and spin on everything and just what's he thinking, what's in his head? Well, I think he's very focused on Trump and he's very focused on his concerns that he has about he's, he's, I guess it would be it would be almost a panic, you know, that this, this country would really be in a terrible spot if Trump became president. So I think he's very focused on making that message known. And that's what he's been, and that, that, that was the, the, the premise of his, of his conversation. Well, this so I, I think that sometimes, you know, I mean, this particular interview is now being, you know, kind of dissected, each section, each part of it, each sentence, each comment. Okay. In every interview, okay. you know, there's going to be things that are said um, that could be pulled apart. Sure. Um, and, and, and done, you know, had this been, but this one happens to be, you know, under the microscope. So, um, I, I think that, you know, he, he was very focused, um, on his intent and what he wanted to say. And, um, that was, that was what he was looking at as he made his comments. But I'm so we'll try and clarify things as, as best we can. Um, can, 
start to follow up. Maybe he can start focusing more on the campaign than Hillary Clinton. Well, I mean, I think that's not necessarily fair. I mean, he's been working very hard, shuffling around, you know, every day, you know, bolstering the campaign. But, uh, you know, we'll try and clarify this issue, and we'll try to, you know, we'll, we'll try to... Question, does, is, are there any other um, appearances, like television appearances he has coming up that you guys are aware of? Because the Facebook Live thing, yeah, that's a good idea to clarify for the base, but how can we clarify for everybody else who's seeing this and is not going to tune into that Facebook Live event? Well, again, I, we are not seeing any interest from the media on this at all. Um, we're not getting a lot of media response. We're not getting any questions. I mean, it's just been, you know, it's just been something that's been very internal. So it's something that's focusing on um, concern from the, from the staff and from people involved in the campaign and from libertarian movement. Um, broader than that, not so much. So we'll try to deal with it within those confines right now and, um, I don't think we try to, we try to, we're going to try to make a huge issue out of it nationally. Um, and if, at this point, I don't even know of any national interviews that have been in discussion. Well, how will we, how will we ensure that we kind of, we calm our teams down as best as we can so that way it doesn't become an issue to where it might actually grab media attention and they might spin it in a way that there's there's distaste within the within their own campaign, and you know Hillary has millions, and she's going to use that money, and she's going to use it against us, and she's going to do whatever she can to drive down the amount of votes that we actually get. And so, if we continue and we allow our teams to be dissatisfied and distaste by what he said, this could turn into a very bad thing. This could actually turn into it's not right now, like what I'm saying. It's not right now a a national media uh, topic. It could turn into one though. And that's very bad for us. That's very bad for the movement as a whole. Well, I've well, already keeping seen in mind that as the campaign starts winding down, um, you know, the, the media also gets a little weary of the discussions, too. I mean, we're probably going to see, uh, you know, as we get into the weekend and stuff, them just kind of kind of holding it all their own and waiting until the election results. So I... I um, and this has been a strange campaign, but that's traditionally what happens. Uh, as far as, um, you know, just bolstering your troops, you know, like we're saying, I, I think we should focus on the, the big picture. We just should focus on, if they're, you know, if they're mad at Bill, then, then focus on Gary. And uh, let's just try to, you know, not throw away all the work that we've done. Okay. Quick thing, real quick. Um, as far as bolstering, uh, I'm... I'm an Oklahoma uh, County Coordinator, and I do a lot online and in person, but um, there's been a lot of internal, but I'm in a ton of groups, and there's a lot of people that aren't with the campaign, and I've seen a lot of our supporters uh, switching, the, you know, like they're changing their mind, like, and I'm trying my best to, you know, put forth that whole, you know, take a step back, look at the big picture, down ballot, you know, this is the libertarian, this is a liberty movement, this is, you know, not about the per person, but they're not with the campaign, but they, like, if Bill Weld could do something on live stream or something like that, they would be tuning in. Um, and I, that's what I'm, that's one of my big concerns, is that we're going to, that we're going to lose a lot of our supporters over this that aren't with the campaign. That are in all these groups. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was just gonna say I've already seen like articles put out on like CNN and Reason.com over this. So I like, I feel like even if there's not attention coming in necessarily like direct calls to the campaign asking for a comment, I know that there's it, it's already being perpetuated by different media sources outside of the campaign itself. So I'm just a guy and I can only speak for myself, but. I've, I've had some of these people, you know, talking to me and saying that, that they can't support us now because of this, but what I would say back to them is, you know, I mean, what has really changed, if, if your position is that you'll pick a different candidate because our guy said something nice on the last position, I don't see that as a really rational way to make a decision. So, the Bill Weld and 
Gary Johnson are still you know, the best liberty ticket we have. They are the only people that are on the ballot in all these states. So, in heck, there are scandals surrounding both of the Republican and the Democratic tickets. None of that has changed. You know, we're kind of fired up and upset about, you know, the way he made his comment. But it doesn't change the calculation for me. And I don't think it should change it for anybody else. And that, that's what I would try to explain to them, that this is an emotional moment, um, but it doesn't affect the calculation on where your vote is going to go, where it should go, and where it will make a difference this year. If I, if I can say something real quick about that. Um, the comment that got made to me quite succinctly is, why are we working so hard for this campaign when Bill Weld is making comments? Um, to the detriment of uh, this campaign, to the detriment of this movement. And it seems very much that he's just mean. And it's very hard to sit there and say, well, how do I stick it when the people who are at the head of the ticket can't even support the ticket? And at least for Well, I, I don't think that's true at all. I mean, I, I don't see that that, that's, the you know, that's, that's not what's... Whether it's, I mean, I understand perceptions, but that's not the fact. Um, that's, that's not what's happened. That's not what's going on. That's not his intent. That's never been his intent. Um, you know, I, I, so, I think so when that's you're sitting just, there talking a, about, I think when you're sitting there talking about he is, he is adamant against Trump getting elected, which I think we all can agree on is a really bad situation. And he's putting that above the libertarian ticket, the libertarian party. I think that's, that's a real problem where I can file. And I, Perception is reality, and that's a hard truth. But you know, these are people come and say important. So I, I don't know how to respond. To you. Hey, why should I believe in this if I don't need it? Well, I'm going to try and clarify that today. But what I'm stating, telling you is that's not true. I mean, that's not what's going on. Um, you know, Bill is in, is in, and he's part of the campaign. He's been working hard. And he supports the campaign, and um, you know we'll try and you know see if we can remedy this, this today and fix it. And that's the you know the tenor of this call. Right, but, but that's mean, not his, his, his key. I think what he's trying to say out is trying so hard. He, uh, Weld kind of has shot us in the foot, and we're doing so much damage control, and we've worked so hard, and now this close to the end of the election, we are having to, like, like, hundredfold that to, to try to fix this. Okay, I'm not going to deny that at all. Real not, world, not denying you guys, that. Are, uh, are let we experiencing... Let me talk a minute, Scott. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, I'm not going to deny that at all. Uh, I'm not going to deny that, um, you know, that this is a problem or that, you know, that people are upset. I mean, that, that would just be... <laughs> That would just be a miscalculation. What's going on? But there's a problem. We have we have a problem. I mean, the the, the answer is we have to fix it. Um, you know, I would I, I will try the best I can to try and fix this problem today, and and I will try to make sure that you know as we move forward these last few days that we, we stay on a, on a unified note. And what I ask of you is, you know, look at the big picture. Um, don't throw away all the work that we've done, and concentrate. You know, and Gary. You know, if they're, if they're upset with Bill, then concentrate on Gary. But I can't undo what was done last night. And I can't undo those kind of comments or things that have happened. All I can try and do is remedy them and fix them. And I know that some of you are out there fighting in the trenches and people are attacking, you know, the campaign and saying all kinds of stuff. Okay, I know that. And I appreciate you being in the trenches and, and fighting that fight kind of what happens sometimes in campaigns. It's unfortunate. All I can do is try and fix it, and I'm sorry that we're in that, or I'm sorry we're in this situation. Can, can we not just remind people that there is no, you know, perfect candidate from any party? We're not ever going to agree 100% with anything and everything that any candidate says, and just pass it off. VPs say a lot of crazy stuff in elections. We've all heard it our entire lives. I just think this is a nothing if we let it go. Well, can I just say that I think that a, a positive to focus on has been the, the debates that I've seen on PBS the last few nights with Gary Johnson and Joe Stein. I think Gary did remarkably well, 
And I think that's a focus point that we can use to kind of show people, hey, you know, Gary Johnson at the top of our ticket is still doing remarkably well. He's respectable. He's an honorable guy. I mean, his performance in the debate was, I mean, you don't see that with Trump or Clinton. You don't see, you know, you see a lot of mud flinging and you see a lot of, uh, you know, insults thrown at each other. And you didn't get any of that with Jill Stein or Gary Johnson last night. And so maybe that's something positive that we can kind of shift the attention towards. <sighs> I, don't, yeah, I don't know a lot of people have seen those. But, you know, we haven't uh, internally publicized them too much, but yeah, there'd be three nights uh, of debates. Yeah, let's focus on those and shift away from this and let it fade away because it will. Like, like, well, like I, I said, we do not we do not want this to turn into a national topic to where it actually becomes a newsworthy event. We want to keep our keep our teams under control and, and try to just try to motivate them as best as we can. I mean, that's just that's really all. It, it, that's the, the leadership here. That's what we're going to have to do. We just we have to, you know, let them know that you know you, you came on board mainly for Gary. Yes, Bill's there. You mainly came on board for Gary, though. And you need to continue to support Gary. Gary's a fantastic candidate. Even if you don't think Bill Wall is a fantastic candidate, at least we can I all can agree with Gary. Well, I, I don't. I don't want to make this a you know a, a situation of you know that the Bill's a bad guy or something like that. Situations happen. And we just want to make sure that under everybody understands you know what took place what the intent was, what we're going to try and do from here to remedy any situation and what our, what our real goal is. Our real goal is, you know, on election day. And, you know, um, there's, and I, I don't want to understate this at all. I mean, there's so many people that have put in so much effort on this campaign. Um, I mean, this has a huge organization. And there's just thousands of people working. So we're coming down to the wire, um, you know, like several of you have said, I mean, this is a big picture campaign. So don't lose sight of the big picture. Is there any benefit at all to just coming out and having Bill or Gary recognize that Bill isn't all that wrong in his assessment? I, I mean, for, for God's sakes, Trump is apocalyptic. It would, it be, would it be unwise for Bill and Gary to get out there together and say that, yes, in the scheme of things, Hillary Clinton is clearly better than Trump. I don't know about that. I think the fact that it means that Gary Johnson is the better for liberty. Yeah, Clinton could put us to the brink of nuclear war with their foreign policy. I, yeah, I've got... That's how worse than, than feeling up women without their permission. So let's, not, let's, not, let's not get into a debate here. It's, we need to stay focused here. It's, in all honesty, kind of going to what you're saying, from my opinion, from my point of view, I feel like that would be a bad thing. And the reason why is because now you're having both candidates essentially pseudo endorsing Clinton. And that will actually attract yeah. media attention. Then they're going to go, oh, well, hold on a second. Well, Are that's kind right of what Bill did last night. Yeah, we don't want that from Gary. I understand, but you don't yeah. want both candidates doing yeah. that. <laughs> Hey, do we have a clip from Kennedy with Gary Johnson talking bad about Clinton and also not agreeing with Will? Do we have a, what was the question? Do we have the clip from Kennedy with Gary Johnson last night talking bad about Clinton instead and not agreeing with Will? You know, I haven't seen the Kennedy clip from last night. I mean, it's probably it available. Good. And it needs to come out, really. Hey, Mr. Nielsen. Uh, um, my, um, my name is Josh Gukert. Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Libertarian Republic. And uh, a lot of it has been said here throughout this call just about this being an internal issue. Um, so one of the things I think that would be really good is if for uh, Governor Well to sort of just go directly to the Libertarians in this case. Uh, so would it be perhaps possible that we could host uh, Governor Will to have, like, an op-ed and just have sort of, like, a, a tone and just... I mean, we, we cover 
covered this pretty extensively today. Um, but if he were to just say, you know, I've, I've known Hillary Clinton for 40 years, and while I respect her as a, a politician, the, the tone I was going for was one that was uh, being respectful, but I, you know, I disagree with her on all these policy issues, and, you know, an apologetic tone almost, it would, it would be something like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to short-circuit all of our hard work. Uh, would it be possible? Would uh, Governor Well be interested, perhaps, in, do, in doing something like that? We would definitely want to help any misconceptions about what he has said. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you for your comment. Um, yeah. That's an option. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a viable option um, uh, of, of releasing it some kind of an op-ed statement. We were looking at other sources of, of release, but that, that's certainly a viable one. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, uh, I, I just, yeah, I followed you on Twitter, uh, so you can just direct that to me. It's just Josh Fugert, uh, G-U-C-K-E-R-T. That's my Twitter handle. So if you just want to message me about that, possibly, uh, let me know. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for hosting, though. Um, I'm going to get off now, but thanks. If whatever is decided and something's going to happen, it, it, what, how will it be released so that we know so we can cover it? Well, we'll let you know. We'll, we'll uh, let you know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for being, being part of this call. And, again, thanks for all your work, all your efforts. And we will be having, like I stated last night, we will be having another call. This is just kind of a quickie tonight. Today, we will have another call probably on Friday afternoon. I think they're scheduling it at 12 noon Mountain Time. So thanks again, and we'll, we'll end this call now. So thanks for your time. Ron, when is the call later on today? You said there's another